Hey everyone, this is Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. It is early July here in the early afternoon. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about a plant that used to be called Neobenthamia gracilis. It is now called Polystachia Neobenthamia, which is kind of a weird, a weird taxonomic change, but it is what it is. As many of you orchid growers know and are probably annoyed by the taxonomy for the whole group of orchids is constantly changing and we are constantly changing our, or at least updating our name tags. It is what it is. Don't fight it, just go with it and uh, use the correct taxonomy. Um, so, uh, I almost call it neobenthamia, but polystachia neobenthamia is, uh, you can see why the old name used to be gracilis. It's kind of a, a grass-like orchid that for me is, let's see if I can turn around and show you, is about this tall. So, you know, maybe two to three feet above the pot. And this is a, this is a particularly large plant, uh, well-grown, well, uh, very happy, just getting absolutely enormous. Uh, you can see that it has a very compact growth habit. So it's kind of tall but it's not sending out shoots this way. So this is a very, very mature plant that is confined within this particular pot. I don't know, maybe it's a six or seven inch pot. I'm not really good with my, my measurements, um, but it's, it's got a few unique characteristics in addition to being very grass-like. Uh, it has some beautiful flowers see if I can show this to you without snapping them off. Uh, it creates these little little balls of flowers here at the tip uh, of its new growth. Uh, bright white and if you can see in the throat there these, these really cool little dots. Hopefully the camera is picking that up and actually focusing. Let's see if I jam this in here if it'll get it. No, it looks like it's trying to focus on me. It is nicely fragrant and the flowers last for, I don't know, Probably close to a month. Uh, I'm kind of sad that I didn't get a whole bunch of flowers here, but this one will, will bloom on and off a couple times a year for me. Um, in addition to having really cool flowers, it is uh, it is a root monster. Uh, what's really interesting about this one and its roots is that its roots are so robust that it actually pushes the plants out of the pot. So you can see the roots are all the way down the bottom and it's, they're growing so much that they're actually pushing the whole plant up and out of the pot. You know, I only repotted this maybe two years ago and these growths were flush with the top of the pot and it is growing up, up and away. And I don't really know what I'm gonna do about that. I think I might just leave it and let it continue to grow. Uh, this is a terrestrial species, so I grow it in my, my usual terrestrial mix which is 50% uh, sand and 50% peat. Um, you know, you can see the roots growing out the bottom here. Um, so like I said, the, the root part of this is, is just as impressive as the rest of the plant. Um, I'm gonna show you here in a second exactly how I grow this. This is a high, high, high light species. Um, they want full, full sun if at all possible. So as you know, I grow here in central Texas where it's hot. It is very bright for, for the summer and I grow this in full sun from about sunrise until about two to three in the afternoon. Um, and it keeps the plant about three feet tall. I have seen plants that are not grown as bright. I've seen photos of plants that are not grown as bright that are nine and 10 feet tall as they're stretching, looking for that really bright sunshine. So I am showing you just how bright this particular species likes to grow. You can see I grow it along with my certipodiums. There's the bloom right now. Is it about? It is about 1:30 in the afternoon, and these guys are exposed to full Texas sun up until about 2:30 or so. You can see over here the shade of the oak trees is slowly making its way over and these guys will be under about 50 percent shade in about an hour but basically from sunrise until 
early to mid afternoon, they're getting blasted by full Texas sun in 100, 105 degree temperatures. Um, and they love it. But it's a, it's a species that is not very often grown. And to be honest, most people don't want it for some reason. Uh, I have had cakeys many times that I've offered for free, uh, put online for basically very cheap and, and no one ever picks them up, uh, which is too bad. It's, it's a really cool species, super easy to grow if you have the right conditions. And again, we got these blooms that are last for about a month. Very cool, very fragrant, um, very interesting species. As you can see, I have the the slow release fertilizer in these little baskets here and it seems to really really be growing pretty well um, it is actually from it is one of the African species which is you know I feel like there's not a whole lot of African species that are grown here in the United States we've got a lot of angricums um, but that's that's most of what we see from Africa and so this is a, a cool little thing that should be grown more often in my opinion. Anyway, uh, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, share it, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.